The following is a transcript of a conversation between Matthias de Stefano, referred to as me, and his higher self, referred to as I am. 23rd March, 2021. Look. Me. The eyes are the reflection of the soul. Many traditions often claim this, and it has become a popular belief, a saying culturally adopted by many peoples. This came to mind when we talked about the soul and its psychological aspect. How is the soul related to the eyes? I am. Can you stare at someone's eyes? Me. Not everyone. In fact, I often make aware of the fact that I don't really look into people's eyes when we speak, but into their teeth and lips. Very few I can see in the eyes directly. I am. Why? Me. Well, because I feel uncomfortable. The sensation is as if looking into the eyes of the person could be confused with a deep connection of some kind, or even interest. I am. What kind? Me. You know, sexual, romantic, kind of. I am. And do you know why this happens? Me. I guess it's because I would only stare in the eye at someone I connect with on all levels, with whom I wouldn't be ashamed to be naked. I am. Because the direct gaze strips you naked. Me. Yes, that's the feeling. Like, I feel completely naked, helpless. I am. Okay. Now you understand the power of the gaze in the psychology of the human, in its effect on the soul, the emotion of people. The gaze goes through the physical body, observes the innermost part of your being, and in that instant it strips you naked in such a way that you do not possess how to defend yourself. You are paralyzed. You do not possess tools. And there are only two natural occasions when the gaze has a high impact, at the moment of reproduction and at the moment of threat. The rest of the time, the eyes rest. They do not usually look people directly into the eyes, but they look at the face, because the nervous system uses too much energy when two eyes look directly at each other, and therefore the energy is saved only to look for a partner to reproduce or a victim to attack. If neither of these two circumstances occurs, the fixed gaze implies depth, to see more inward to the depths of being where lies what you call soul, that sacred essence that makes you who you are and that your being seeks to protect in a thousand ways. Thus, when someone stares into your eyes, you feel a threat, seeking to protect your essence by turning to gaze, changing its angle, clouding vision, closing your eyes. In this way, we see that the eyes allow you to see the soul of the other person, because when you stop to observe them, they react, causing individuals to act in unexpected ways, not controlled by the mind, because it collapses. Me. Why are we so sensitive to the gaze? I am. Because of the nervous system. This system is composed of the brain, with millions of cells called neurons, cerebellum in charge of balance, the central trunk, which receives and sends signals, and nerves that are like very long neurons through which information passes. The nerves extend throughout the body connected to the spinal cord along the spine, receiving and sending neurotransmitters, electrical signals that expand or contract the cells with discharges and pulses, making them react to external stimuli. So the central nervous system is related to the five senses, since they are the means by which the body interprets the signals from the outside to be translated inside. Me. Touch, taste, smell, hearing, and vision. I am. And in relation to this last sense, the eye, it could be said that it is the miracle of the nervous system. Billions of years ago, when the central nervous system was developing in cells to receive electrical pulses from the environment, one of those energies that affected the cellular pulse was photons. Photon is a particle of light, from the Greek photon equaling light. They bounce off all objects at high speed, and depending on the molecular composition of each object, they collide, vibrating in the tune or wavelength of the larger particles it touches. That is, depending on the frequency at which the photon vibrates when it hits a much larger object, such as an atom, it is perceived as a specific color. However, this was impossible to know until the nervous system evolved to pick up these particle waves. Me. So we didn't see the light until the neuronal cells adapted to interpret the signal of a photon collapsing against them. I am. And not just any cell. It had to be a specific one. 
It is known as photosensitive and was developed with the ability to capture as many photons as possible. This meant that, after millions of years, the cells specialized in capturing light and one or two photosensitive celluloid clusters developed in some living organisms in the ocean. Those who had this type of cells had ease to find food and thrived on those who did not have this deformation. Thus, over time, photosensitive cells evolved to become the first eyes. At first, underwater, they were still covered by the saline layers of the environment, which reflected light and protracted it from light rays harmful to vision. But over time, when finding a way out of the water, only those who, in an amphibious way, managed to create a transparent eyelid which contained the salt water within this cell cluster could do so to keep the eye moist, defending it from the powerful rays of the sun. Me. Like the membranes that some birds and reptiles have, right? I am. That's right. Over time, these membranes evolved and the skin itself became flexible, becoming eyelids. Photosensitive cells began to form, what we know today as an eye, and the membranes that kept the saline waters in it became smaller and smaller in mammals until they became what you call caruncle, a small membrane at the edge of the eye that protects the tear. The tear duct secretes saline water to keep the eye moistened so that photons do not burn sensitive cells. The two eyes fulfill a function of visual balance so that the brain finds a balance of movement, distance, recognition of the terrain, and their nerve endings connect the optic nerve with the brain. The eye is provided with several layers, all designed to better capture light as sharply as possible. From the visible pupil, or crystalline, where light is captured, to the hypnotizing beauty of the iris, the fleshy formation that surrounds the pupil with different textures and colors, which regulates the entry of light by contracting or dilating, to the cornea, with its characteristic white part of the eye, and the vitreous humor, the internal fluid where light is reflected, the eye became the most perfect and quintessential organism of interpretation of the medium. Me. I read once that the human eye captures images with a resolution of about 576 megapixels, when a professional camera is usually 6 megapixels or even 18 megapixels. That is very little compared to the eye. How did nature achieve such perfection? I am. Millions of years of trial and error, when photography is only 200 years old. Because the eye, the organ of the sense of vision, is one of the most developed. Its nerve endings not only receive information from the outside, but reflect that from the inside. The eyes are, together with the ears, the sensory organs that work the most during the day, in an unconscious and at the same time conscious way, that is, being controlled by the parasympathetic nervous system, the one that works without the conscious understanding of its acts, such as the heartbeat, that cannot be manipulated by the intention. And on the other hand, it can be manipulated by the sympathetic nervous system. That is, one that can be used with an intention and will of the individual mind, such as grasping something or speaking. Thus, seeing becomes a conscious way of transmitting what is lived inside and what is perceived or reflected from the world, a way in which the brain can inform the outside world what is going through your brain. Thus, the eyes can be sad, happy, depressed, euphoric. The tears that were once used to clean the eye and protect it from external garbage also begin to flow at times when the body seeks to purify internal garbage. Me. What we call crying. I am. Exactly. Thus, the eye becomes a reflection of the internal, a communicator of emotions that words fail to convey. And therefore, you can say that the gaze is the reflection of the soul. Mirar, from the Latin mirare, comes from the Indo-European smai, which means to laugh, surprise, as in English smile. This word speaks of a communication between two people, an interaction that represents a reflection, the observation of something that produces a reaction in the other. In several languages, mirare became the origin of the word mirror. In English, mirror, in Catalan, miral. The word look in English comes from the Indo-European look that gives rise to light. Thus, look, see, is a synonym for the action of illuminating, of shining, of perceiving light. Me. So, if the light, the colors, are the energy of the soul, and the nervous system is the physical form in which the soul feels, 
The eyes are the inner expression and inner perception of this attribute of being. I am. In the gaze, you not only see the light of the world, but you let the world see your own light. And that light seeks to be protected. Now, let us remember the two principles of the gaze, defend and reproduce. In the first case, you should know that the eyes were developed not only to search for food, but to identify enemies. Ocular imaging was developed as a high-level defense body, in which a glance can frighten, ward off, frighten prey or enemies. An intense look is synonymous with struggle, with possible death. That is why it is so difficult psychologically and biologically to hold the gaze, because it requires too much alert energy, in which the whole body tenses, trying to know if the one who observes us is the prey or the hunter. This is something you can see in animal and human culture, when in a fight, normally males usually rest their foreheads against each other, staring at each other and intensely at very close range. That turns on hormone levels, alerting the brain and glands to prepare to spread adrenaline throughout the system. Me. Now I understand a lot of things. When I see those silly attitudes of boys who fight, and instead of hitting each other, they just stare at each other, pushing their heads like rams or bulls. I am. And the other intense look is that of reproduction, since this look lets the possible copulation know that there is an inevitable interest. This, for thousands or millions of years, has been becoming a way of relating intensely, letting it be known that adrenaline was being activated for reproduction. Me. Ah, that's why intense stares make me feel uncomfortable. Not only because it seems like an invasion of space, but because I feel it as a violation of the person, a form of subconscious sexuality. I am. The gaze is the action of putting into practice the millions of years of evolution of the eyes. The gaze is a form of communication, both in negative for the struggle and in positive for the union. And in turn, it represents the ability of a being to reflect its emotions both inwards and outwards. They are the reciprocal communication of the nervous system. The eyes thus transmit more energy than any part of the body without touching the other person, which awakens the energy of Tantra, where the sacred fire is lit without touch, but simply with the look and the breath me. How do I make sure I'm not afraid to stare into my eyes? I am. You must lose the fear that people will know about you. You must free yourself from the fear of defending the internal, of protecting yourself. For when they look into your eyes, people will be able to see reflected the synapses of your brain, the circuits of your soul, and you are naked and weak before the world. The eyes paralyze, because in the fight, the body stops static so as not to attract attention and camouflage, while in reproduction, remaining static was because it is a moment of weakness before predators, and it was necessary to stay alert because it is a moment of vulnerability. That is why the gaze shows all your fears, all your anxieties, everything that is hidden within you. So in order to look at others and not be afraid of being weak, you must first learn to look at yourself and face your weaknesses to awaken your strength. Me. And when I have my inner power, I will be able to look others directly in the eye without preconceptions or fears. I am. The communication power of the brain is not in the word, but in the look. When you manage to see someone in their eyes, you can feel the power of their mind, the strength of their manifestation. And without words, you can feel everything. Looking into the eyes is like looking into the same universe. Me. Looking at the soul made matter. I am. The eyes are the manifested consciousness. Dare to see beyond, deeper. Dare to hold a look. And you will see the light that radiates consciousness to the whole world reflect on you.